Welcome back to Dino's Garage for the VN900 Custom. Now, mirrors. This is the um, original mirrors that come with the VN900 Custom. I guess this is the same kind of mirror that comes with most of the VN900 machines. Um, yeah, not really my cup of tea, you know, it's, it's, it's a big old mirror, big chrome stem. Um, yeah, it's great, it's got a nice big mirror to look in. You know, and you know that is good for safety reasons, etc., etc. But on a little bit of style over um, sort of purpose, really. So I've been out, looked at eBay, found some pretty good, what I believe to be pretty good stylish-looking mirrors, anyway, and they were cheap. Um, now I'm not riding this bike in all sorts of weather, so I'm not commuting on this bike, so I don't have to worry too much about the quality of the paint etc it's more how they look and you know they they work and give me what i need which is some rear view um visibility for my motorways dual carriageways i need to look over and you know see my shoulder look in the mirror same with um, anyone coming up on the inside i'll show what those mirrors look like now fitted them yesterday afternoon took just a few minutes to to fit um, and i'll just run through how easy it is to fit those moves as well as let's have a look now right so the mirrors I'll show you in a second um, hopefully you can see this that's the model number SH4001 black the VN the, the, the bolt size here I believe this is probably about a 10 mil thread that drops in so you get the adapters these are eight mils and you get the 10 mil adapters as well as and what you basically do is wind this bolt down and put a bit of loctite i use a bit of loctite some decent mirrors will come with like a blue loctite already on the bolt but i use this loctite 2400 you just put a little bit on the thread then wind that into the underside of your new mirror wind this bolt back up wind it into your um, position where your mirror bolt would normally go into and then you basically get your mirror into the position you like and then lock this nut down into into position so i also needed the 8 mil spanner that was to lock this little bit here this is an 8 mil lock that into the actual mirror and then it comes with an allen key with these particular mirrors um, to adjust the actual um, sort of positioning of the mirror once it's on the bike so let's have a look at those mirrors now on the bike so here we are these are the mirrors completely different style and look to them like I say I only put these on last night so I haven't even had time to clean these mirrors haven't even been had time to set them up yet but they're a, a nice style I find suit the bike nicely they just lower the profile a little um, obviously when you've got the big chrome one sticking up over the top with the big mirror it just kind of takes that bar height a little bit too high whereas these mirrors not so much yeah they're quite a thin almost sort of delicate looking mirror compared to those big chrome ones Just adds to the sort of custom style and looking of the bike really. I mentioned this is the pivot point so you undo this allen bolt here and then you can bring the mirror forward or back. This is the bolt once you've gone into position you tighten this down and um, there is uh, another allen bolt up underneath there if you want to tighten that up but you should be able to obviously move these well enough if they're not tight enough then you can do that up and tighten it a little 
look pretty sweet on there I think going from black to chrome to black rather than all that chrome above welcome back to Dino's garage for the VN 900 custom um, I've been out on the bike this morning so the bike is nice and warm the engine oil is hot only been back about 15 20 minutes so what we're going to do is we're going to drop the oil out and change the oil filter let's have a look at that together and just see how easy or maybe a little bit complicated that might be on the VN 900 custom so straight away one of the issues is here the oil filter actually sits in directly in front of the engine below the radiator but I think the voltage regulator might be in behind this so we need to remove this and get this out of the way so we can then undo the oil filter and obviously pull it out straight out from sort of this point here so most bikes you wouldn't have this issue but with this particular model because this is where it is that's the only complication we should come across today so let's get this undone and then get that moved out of the way now so the first thing to do is to remove these what appear to be perhaps 10 mil yep 10 mil that will remove the metal cover I'm just going to hold that cover in place so it doesn't put any so that's the cover off now you can see the voltage regulator and like I say the oil filter is here directly behind so what we need to do is remove the voltage regulator out of the way there there are two bolts that bolt this on and then unless we get this out of the way that filter won't unscrew and be able to be removed so we've either got to try and remove the whole bracket system or we've got to try and move the voltage regulator but either way it looks like we need to undo these two bolts to remove the voltage regulator and also unclip it from here which should be simple enough there's just a simple electrical connection here which should be just a sort of press and then that should release but we need to undo these two bolts first some bikes it might be a bit easier on you know other VNs but this has gone through a little bit of corrosion so things aren't as easy to undo as they, as they might be on newer bikes or better condition bikes so again just press that connector and it should release our voltage regulator there we go that's the voltage regulator off and that's the electrical connection it just has a little sort of push tab on the left hand side once you push that and it clicks you should then just be able to sort of wriggle wriggle it out of there so now that oil filter would come out but we've got these two bolts so we're now on to the sort of third pair five and six 10 mil bolts and finally we should be able to have full access Thank goodness these bolts aren't corroded enough to be a problem, they're all undoing pretty easily. So, so far this has just taken us a matter of a few minutes and all we needed was a 10mm socket and obviously some sort of ratchet wrench to use that socket. Obviously we don't want to mix up 
which 10mm bolts were for which so I'm putting those two back into place in that bracket so they'll go there now we've got full access to that oil filter you can also have a look at the frame there's a little bit of corrosion here so I will wire brush that up get a bit of cure rust get a bit of paint on there before putting everything back into place but now we've got access to that filter we can now get a pan underneath drop that drain plug out and then obviously we can undo this air, um, oil filter and then change that as well as sort of release a bit of oil out of here as well so next step is to uh, go and get the oil in the new oil filter and then we'll see what the actual drain plug is like for undoing that and dropping the oil out right so now what we want to do is we want to check according to the Kawasaki VN owner's manual what the correct viscosity of oil we should be using and also the amount that we need so let's have a look at that now so here we have the Kawasaki owner's manual there is a section in here relating to oil so if we just flick through we will see this section here so basically the engine needs three liters of oil to go in if I remove the filter and replace the filter because there will be no oil in the filter it'll be 3.2 liters assuming that the filter goes on dry what I normally do is half fill the oil filter so I can screw it on without oil dripping out and then I put about 3.1 liters into the engine because 0.1 of that will obviously fill up the 0.2 capacity of our oil filter it does state in here that it is SAE 10W40 it gives recommended types like the uh, JASO numbers or the API SG but basically you can go to a semi synthetic 10W40 but do not put a fully synthetic oil into the VN800 or 900 engine fully synthetic will basically cause clutch slip the 800 that I had before had a clutch slip problem and I had to drop the oil out and change the entire clutch plates uh, and then put 10W40 semi-synthetic oil back in because somebody before I owned it had I think put fully synthetic oil in there causing the clutch slip so yep 10W40 semi-synthetic oil right so now what we'll do is we'll look at where the drain plug is it is undo that the likelihood is it's probably a 17 mil but we'll check that and drop the oil straight into the tray so although the actual filler for the uh, engine oil is this side and although the window which is sitting under here is on the left hand side and the bike sits on the stand and leans to the left hand side unfortunately what Kawasaki did was put the drain plug directly underneath in the center of the sump so basically if we were to undo this now a lot of the oil would still sit down on the left hand side of the crankcase and down in the left hand side of the sump so what we need to do is actually get the bike so it's central upright and to do that well I'll show you what we need because you either need to block the uh, side stand so the bike's almost upright um, but by doing so you risk obviously the bike possibly falling over if it's too far upright or you need to chock the front wheel with some sort of uh, wheel stand so we'll go and grab that now because that's currently holding up the YZF750R in the garage so let's go and grab that now and we'll get that on the front wheel so here is my front wheel stand in position I lean it against the wall here because as I push the bike uh, this part here pivots so as you push it'll tip in but you need to sort of have it against the wall or bolt it to a floor ideally it does kind of work if the bike's fairly lightweight 
in the middle of the floor. I find with the YZF that's okay, but um, I'm just about to push the bike into position now, and I'll show you how easy that is. basically that's it that is the bike in position and upright so I can now undo that um, drain bolt um, like I say it does look like it's probably about a 17 but we'll we'll check that out now so I have a 17 bit here let's first check that yep yeah, just as I expected a 17 mil most common Japanese drain plugs are 17mm um, and this is no exception. So I'll get the um, cardboard under there now and then get the uh, pan under there and we'll drop that plug out. Then we need to undo this as well, that just helps the oil flow just by allowing, allowing some air in, it just helps the oil to flow out. You can't ever just drop the um, plug and expect all the oil to find its way out you do have to undo this and just loosen it off you can just have it sat in there loose it just needs to sort of breathe some air through to allow the oil to to drop out more freely and then we'll work on the uh, filter as well and get that up so before we undo that drain bolt what we are going to do is undo this now i do find often that these are really really tight and really difficult to get hold of um, so without damaging this because this is only plastic I'm going to use a glove over the top and then I'm going to use a pair of grips to sort of grip hold of that basically we're going to be gripping hold of this but we want to use the glove so we don't damage anything and it should then just turn as you can see nice and easy you obviously you've got all that leverage using these but it's really difficult with the hand so like i say all you really need to do is undo this just to allow that to breathe and for the oil to sort of flow down with the air coming in at the top and you can leave it off you can leave it just just screwed in so it doesn't get contaminated or lost and i'm going to get back under here now normally the pans in your way when you're trying to undo this bolt so what you tend to have to do first make sure it's in the undo position is what you tend to have to do is crack it off first like that then get your pan into position and then undo your bolt that will suddenly shoot out so it pays to as you undo it almost putting pressure against the bolt as you wind the bolt out so you're in control when the bolt drops out like so and that is it should have a washer normally it has like a crush washer this doesn't look like it's got a washer. The washer may be stuck to the underside of the belly pan. Um, it should always have a, a brass washer or some sort of crush washer as it winds in that helps form a seal. It's going to put that safely there out of the way. So all we need to do now is get that filter off. As you can see that oil is flowing nicely out of the bottom of there. Um, looks a bit dark that oil. Not too grim I don't think but uh, yeah it will flow for quite a while like I say you really need to get the bike up to temperature up to running temperature to get the viscosity as thin as possible so the oil basically trickles out and you get every last sort of dirty drip of oil out of there so then when you replenish with nice new oil you've got as much new oil in the engine as possible so we'll allow that to drip out and we'll get on with the filter now 
So with the oil draining out of the hole in the sump, we now need to tackle the filter here. Now, it might be that I possibly could undo that filter by hand, but the chances are that it is actually too tight and it is a bit awkward. Um, sometimes you do have like a hexagonal um, sort of almost like a nut welded on the front of filters which is really useful because you can put a socket on and undo the filter and tighten up the new one that way. Um, I may have the right size filter um, cup to go on the front of here so I'll check that out so have a look. Nah, that one's too big so we need to go for my um, sort of scissor cramp type things so this is what I'm talking about um, got these from Halfords in England obviously you can get these off of eBay I found this tool to be absolutely brilliant for various size filters um, basically you can go into that size and obviously it opens up like that and bigger and you can go into that size and it's quite small the teeth basically grip hold of the filter and then you can just use it to undo you should never need a tool like this to do a filter up by the way because a filter should only be done up a little bit more than hand tight um, tight enough that it doesn't obviously vibrate loose but you you know you don't really want to be pinching a filter up with something like this um, and if I ever did, I would be gripping hold in just a fraction. You've got a bit of leverage on it just to make sure it's nice and tight. But other than that, you have got to watch out because it has these teeth that will sort of bite into the metal. And it really is designed to take a filter off that you then dispose of, not really for putting filters on. So I'm going to get round the other side, see whether I've got better access than this side because I've got the brake master cylinder um, and also the engine mount in the way so I'm going to go around and see if I can loosen it off just by losing, using these on the other side I must admit no filters ever defeated this tool but it's because of the angle that I've got these real problems with actually being able to get enough grip and turn and it just won't begin to rotate. There we go. It needed two hands of force on these grips for me to begin to work it loose. Just beginning to turn now. There we go. That's the corrosion that does it. Salt, salt of the winter right in. We'll just sat there and all the dirt that builds up. But there she goes. Just loosening off now. A real pain, this one. So oil's gonna drip down, it's coming straight off the the start motor, I think, there, underneath there. Sometimes you've got to watch because you think the oil's gonna come straight out and then it doesn't, it comes off of something else, but there we go. That's our filter off. Right, so the bike's been draining now for a good half an hour, 45 minutes. I've taken a spot of lunch. What I'm gonna do is just, with a bit of clean rag, wipe the uh, area around the base where that bolt goes, the drain bolt and check and see if there is a crush washer I can't actually see a crush washer stuck to the bottom of the belly pan so I'm going to get that bolt and find myself a, a decent brass or copper washer um, copper washer and uh, put that on that bolt and then we'll put that bolt back in do it up to the right torque setting which again is in that manual um, and once we talk that in, obviously we'll put the filter back on, the new filter, and then we can top up with the 3.1 litres of oil, because we need a minimum of 3 litres plus the 0.2 in the filter. 
So as the manual shows just up here, it needs to be 20 newton meters the torque setting for the actual drain plug. We don't want to over tighten it. You can then damage the thread and you do not want to be damaging the thread in the sump of your engine. So this is my uh, lovely torque wrench here. This is a, a smaller one that I use obviously for smaller, you know, um, less torque settings so I've got to set this to 20 so that's it set to 20 I'll now get a 17 mil um, drive on here and we'll get that bolt in so this is our filter this is an HF 303 this is a uh, high flow filter um, Coincidentally, the filter that came off the bike was also an HF303. Um, I say coincidentally, it's just that particular brand. I mean, obviously, the 303 is the right type of filter uh, made by this particular company to go on this machine. Um, it will fit various other machines, um, but this is a particular one that will fit on this VN900 Custom. So, this is a dry filter. Um, I have taken the plastic seal off of this once I've removed it from the box and there is some grease on this o-ring um, you used to have to put a little bit of engine oil over the dry o-ring seal so it sealed nicely against that flat surface of the engine but this company actually put some grease on that uh, o-ring which is a, a nice touch really so what I'm actually going to do with this is because this filter goes on vertically I'm likely if I put some oil in here to actually lose it as it goes vertical and then and run out so I'm actually going to put this on dry and then put 3.2 litres into the engine instead nearly drop that into some dust and dirt but luckily it didn't actually drop on the surface you never want to uh, get a seal it's dropped into the dirt and got grease on it and put it back against your engine if you did drop it like I almost did it actually fell on the metal part and caught it but if I'd have got dirt and debris all over that uh, o-ring I would have had to have cleaned all that off before putting it back on here so I always start by anti-clockwise turning so the thread sort of engages before I then begin to turn clockwise what you don't want to do obviously is cross thread and this should wind on nicely by hand there we go now this particular filter is very difficult to sort of get your hand in clearance on to really get your whole hand around it to tighten it right up. So I'm going to tighten it as best I can by hand. Remember I've got rubber gloves on so they are giving me a bit more grip as well as your hand really wouldn't give you enough grip but rubber gloves to add to it see if I can get into a better position with my left hand to turn it or even both but you've got the, the pipe here coming out the bottom of the rad the bracket here that all of the voltage regulator fitted onto you've got probably what is the oil pressure switch coming off the engine there so there's lots of things in the way of you actually getting any decent purchase on that filter to tighten it right up properly so if you get the right size cup to go on there and then normally those cups have a, a sort of hex headed bolt that you can tighten up with a wrench um, but I'm just going to see if I can just do it up as much as I can by hand and then what I'll do is I'll uh, go at it actually with the, uh, the the pliers that we used before but just very gently just to make sure it's pinched up nice and tight so 
Now we've put the 17mm uh, plug back in with the crush washer, done that up to the 20 newton torque setting. We've put the filter back on, tightened that up properly, so that's all good. And remember that filter is dry, so we're going to need to put 3.2 litres of this 10W40 semi-synthetic oil into the engine. Um, you may or may not have a funnel to actually fill this up with. Now the filler necks that come out of the oil aren't always that good and I wouldn't trust trying to fill up into here at an angle. Um, so you can always use um, a bottle to make your own funnel with. Um, actually I've had this in the garage for quite a while so what I'm going to do is cut off this excess like so and then what I can do is actually just going to cut that off so I can go in it at the angle that I need. So that's going to go into our filler on the actual engine and then I'll just clean this out, make sure it's nice and clean and then I can use this as a funnel to pour into to get the oil into the engine. Let's do that now. So with this particular oil, this comes in a four litre can Obviously with most cars they're 5 litres, um, but being a motorcycle it's a 4 litre specifically motorcycle oil. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a marker and actually mark on here the 1 litre point. And I know it is marked on here, it shows it, but just have a really good black line. So when I start pouring this in here, I can stop, put it on a level surface and check that I'm down to or just approaching that one litre and not overly putting too much oil beyond that one litre into here because you know once we start getting to 3.3, 3.4 we can start causing problems so we don't want to be putting too much oil into the engine. So I'll just mark that up. One litre there so I know this being a 4 litre, I'm going, going down to that mark there and 3 litres would have gone in. And then anything just below that is going to be our 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Incidentally with this particular can there was no pull out um, neck so we really did need to have this funnel. So this is where I'm going to let that run in there and go and put my can on a level surface and check and see how much or how close we are to that one litre mark and I don't know if you can make it out but we are just pretty much on this mark just above the mark in fact is where it is so I need to do the point two now so like I say we want that Point two, and I would say we're pretty much there as you can see that's our one litre and I'd say that is about 0.8 so we have now put 3.2 litres of oil from this can into our engine and we're good to go with uh, putting that filler cap back on and yeah we'll start it up gently like I say let that oil flow into the filter the point two will go into the filter and then we'll have three litres circulating around our engine now before I can actually start the engine I have to put the voltage regulator on and before I can put the voltage regulator on I have to actually tackle the rust that's in this area here and there is also a little bit along the underside of the frame tube in here so there we go that's the oil change now done and the voltage regulator and the sort of uh, plate is back in place on the front there um, in front of the oil filter um, just a, a point to make really reference the oil that's come out of the engine if we look here it indicates about 3.7 litres um, also the filter came off and that was heavy with oil inside it so that would have had about sort of 
0.1 to 0.2 litres inside as well. Um, but yeah, interesting point being that this probably had about 3.9 litres in total in this engine. Now, this has only been serviced by a proper service place, um, so it's an interesting thing that um, when you buy a bike, you might think it's just been serviced, you don't need to change the oil, which should be true. But in this case, this bike's actually been riding with about 0.9 litres too much in its engine, um, and ob obviously that, that could eventually cause a bit of damage from the excess of oil pressure. So yeah, just a point there really, there we go, you know, you can see it, point, uh, 3.7 litres of oil come out and we've only put 3 litres in as well as the point 0.2 that's gone into the actual filter. So um, thanks for watching Dino's Garage for the VN900 Custom, that's been the oil change that we've now done. Um, we're going to move on now to other things and uh, look at a few other things that we can sort out. Thanks for watching.